Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus, and today we're gonna go over more UV mapping basics. So the last exciting tutorials, we went over about the theories of UV mapping. We also went over planar mapping and how to use that planar mapping and projection to UV map more complicated shapes. In this tutorial, we're gonna go over several UV tools that you can find in Maya. And we are also gonna be using the same concepts, which is projecting, cutting, sewing, and then putting it into the zero to one space. Let's go ahead and get started with the next UV mapping tool. The next object is a cylinder. Let's take a look at the grid. And right off the bat, you can see that that is not good. That is a lot of stretching. It's a lot of rectangles. Uh, the bottom and top look pretty good actually. So I might leave that alone, but we gotta do something about that. Now it's already UV mapped, but I do wanna show you what cylindrical mapping looks like. So cylindrical mapping projects in a cylinder. So that's why a cylinder will be perfect. So cans, water bottles, all types of stuff would be really great with cylindrical mapping. Now, the problem is though, is that it does have a flat top. So very similar to the cube, we're gonna have to use different types of UV tools. So let's start off first of all with UVs, cylindrical mapping. So cylindrical mapping, as you can see, projects. But the weird thing about pro the projection is that it only does half of the cylinder. So you can see that it kind of stretches out the UV out to beyond the zero to one space, which is a little strange. So this is okay though, whoops. This is okay if you have half a cylinder. So for example, if you're trying to UV map a boat, uh, UV map a watermelon that's been cut in half, like that's okay. Uh, for this case or this scenario, that's not really okay. So let's fix it. We're gonna take this projection, this little red line right here, and I'm gonna close it. Notice how it affects the UVs on the right here. So that means that I closed it. Now, I do wanna scale it. So these guys are actually pretty handy because I can scale the UVs. So I do encourage you to play around with some of these just to see what happens. You're not gonna break it. You could always start from the beginning, but uh, there's a lot of little things you can do with this. I can make this wider, so it's easier to select a projection. But uh, my goal though is to stretch this out until this looks like a square. Now it does require a little bit of guessing and eyeballing on your side, but that's, that's okay. That's part of the artistic part of this. All right, so the good news is, go to object mode, is that our object looks great. The bad news is the top, it looks crazy. So we need to, UV map this. Now we can't use cylinder because this isn't really a cylinder, but it is a plane. So let's grab some faces here. I'm gonna deselect the bottom. So let me show you again. We're gonna make a selection, then deselect the bottom. So I only get the top. I'm gonna go to UVs, planar mapping options. I'm gonna use Y, make sure image width height ratio is on, apply, then move it aside. Okay, much better. Let's go ahead and take a look at the bottom, select these guys. Now you could select each plane individually if you like to, but or each face, but I'm just gonna go ahead and make a selection like this, deselect it up here, and then you have all the faces. Again, apply, it's red, so I'm gonna go to my transform. I am going to flip, and there we have it. So far so good, everything looks good, the grid looks great. Now we need to put everything into zero to one space. So I'm gonna double click on my faces here and then scale it down and make sure that I can fit it into the zero to one space. Again, I'm just scaling, I'm using my tools, W, E, R, focus in here, F. And uh, I wanna take up as much space. So the, here's another thing you need to take into consideration is scale. The bigger, the more information you have here. So the more grid you have, the more information or texture information you're gonna have. Now, that's a good thing unless the rest of it is not the same scale. So your goal is to scale it the same scale as all the other ones. So it takes a little, it's a little bit of a challenge, um, but that's part of the nature of UV mapping is that you need to go ahead and try to scale it as best as you can to, so that one doesn't have more texture information than the other. So I might need to scale this Oops, let's grab this one. Scale this down just a little bit more. And this one, of course, is about the same size. And there you go. So now we've used 
two types of UV mapping. We've used cylindrical mapping for the side, we use a planar mapping, and then we place it in a zero to one space. Now, I could potentially grab an edge and sew it, but it doesn't really benefit it because it's going to have so many edges anyway. So I'm just gonna leave it at that, and then if I needed to smooth over, then I would probably use a different software like Mudbox, get rid of any seams. Okay. Finally, the sphere. The sphere is always going to be a challenge because there is this thing called a tip and the tip is always going to look a little crazy. But let me show you what spherical does. So this is the default. It comes like this. It's probably the best one you're going to find, but let's use spherical. Spherical is a projection based on a sphere. And same thing as the other one, you're going to close it. And then we're going to take this and close it as well. So notice that the projection can be closed on both the top and the side. And I'm going to scale it just so you guys can see the projection a little bit better. So here's the projection. Hmm. So it looks good on the side until we get to the top. And the top's all like swirly and a little crazy. So we could planar map the top. We could do a couple of things, but uh, you can use a little planar mapping and mix a couple of things as well. But sometimes the default for the sphere works just as good. Now what we can also try is this thing called unfold. This is a tool that will try to unfold this for us. So we can do unfold and it shrunk it to something crazy, but let's scale it up and see what that looks like. Double click, scale it. And I'm already seeing some crazy issues here, but I think it's interesting to look at. Okay, let's see what the top looks like. So what it tries to do is its best. Whoa, that's where the issue goes. It does a pretty good job, but notice that there's issues. So uh, especially around here. And notice that the purple, that means that there's overlapping. And I could try to manually try to fix this myself. Um, so you can. But uh, sometimes unfolding works. Sometimes it doesn't. You just have to see if it works. This uh, unfolding usually works best with organic objects. All right, cool. So we went over the basics of UV mapping. We went over planar, a more complicated object with lots of planar. We went over cylindrical and we went over spherical. Now there's one more I wanted to show you. Now you got to be careful with this one. It's called automatic. Automatic means that it will project in all six edges and give you the best results possible automatically. Now anything automatic in Maya I would put a big red flag on it because sometimes it works, but most of the time it doesn't. It will give you a lot of pieces. So for example, something as simple as this may look okay. So this is what we did. Let's go to UVs automatic and notice what it does. Collapses, collapses everything into a cube. And the problem with that is that these aren't squares. These are actually rectangles. So that means that's not doing a very good job. But let me try to edit, delete by type history, modify freeze transformations. Let's try automatic again. There you go. Now that looks a lot better. So with this, I could potentially go in and start sewing. So stitch together, select this edge, stitch together, select this edge. S wait, what edge is that? Got to make sure my seam's at the bottom. Okay, that looks like that's going to be the seam at the bottom. That's fine with me. Stitch together, and then we just have to figure out where these guys live. Stitch together, stitch together. Whoop. Maybe I should select something. There you go. Again, double click, scale down, and there we go. Very quickly. And it works really great with hard surface objects like this. Then we get to more organic. So for example, this guy. Oops, let's edit, delete by type history, modify freeze transformations, UV, automatic. So this is what happens when you automatically UV something and it's always it can it's not always the best sometimes it works something sometimes it doesn't so you kind of have to kind of give and take where you want to go so this is a lot of pieces I could go in here and start sewing so for example I can just grab these guys and then I can do stitch together oh there it goes I can try stitching this together and I click the letter G it's gonna okay it doesn't want to do it maybe just so there we go. So, so um, let's try this. We can grab these guys here. They live down here, stitched together. So, so this is really simple geometry. Um, 
So imagine if you're doing a root system or anything more complicated, it will give you tons of little pieces and it's actually pretty, well, a little bit overwhelming. So take, take a warning uh, from me and, and just give it a shot, see if it works, but most of the time you're gonna have to do it yourself. So let's go ahead and click so, and you can start to see that it's acting very interesting, but I'm gonna go ahead and try to see if I can stitch together the last piece Click so for the little pieces that are already connected. So, whoa, so and so. Right, let's double click, scale, maybe rotate this a little bit. Click this in the zero to one space. There it is. Zero to one. You can see that this, oh gosh, it did an. Not the best job, but there you have it. Um, you can see where the seam is, so it's right there in the center. It's a lot nicer if you just kind of split it in the middle and, you know, go from there. But let's see what happens if we unfold. So let's grab that. Let's go to unfold. <laughs> so this is definitely something you're trying to avoid, which is huge, little grids here, gigantic grids here. I mean, if I, if I try to assign a texture, just to demonstrate to you guys, I'm going to assign the uh, second texture. Turn this off. Notice how pixelated this one is versus here. Um, you want to try to keep it as even as possible because it looks better that way. But if you have something that's really pixelated and one that's not, it's very noticeable. And you can see the seams are really bad too. So that's something that you need to keep in mind. So remember when we were taking all that effort and making sure that the grids are the same, this is what you're trying to avoid. So I would have to go in and maybe let me undo this. Let's put this back to normal. Quote unquote normal. Whoops. Let me assign this because I just undid. There we go. So now at least I know that the textures are about the same scale. So now the only thing I have to worry about is all these themes. So I would take this into my box and probably paint it out. I'm going to do all of them. Uh, there we go. So there you go. UV mapped everything. Hey, looks so nice. Okay, so that was a quick tutorial on how to UV map your objects using your three and potentially four UV mapping methods, one cylindrical, one planar, spherical, and with warning, automatic. Hopefully that was helpful. I know UV mapping can be a little bit tedious, so I highly encourage you guys to just kind of practice every single model that you see goes through. So anything that has a texture on it, you have to UV map. So it's something that you should really get to learn and just, you know, get used to. Uh, it's one of those tedious things that a lot of people don't like to do, but it's really important because you get to produce some really nice materials and textures and you're, well, you make it look like a real object. So that is the basics of UV mapping. I do have future other tutorials where we go over much more complicated things like uh, a person, an arm, and a couple others, which I will show at the end and also on the links below. So this is just the basics. Uh, you can get a little bit more advanced as we go on, but hopefully that was helpful. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. You can always ask me uh, leaving a message below. or You can always reach me at my website at academicphoenixplus.com. Thank you again and have a wonderful day and I will see you next time.